let's talk about the real Mo Norman. Now, there's a lot of people out there that are trying to copy what we do at Graves Golf with teaching the single plane swing of Mo Norman. There's a lot of people that say they may have met Mo or learned something from Mo. And look, Mo was great. He was a, he was a fantastic golfer. He uh, was was absolutely. Uh, I miss him a lot because he he taught me so much about the game and other things. Um, he was fun to to watch hit golf balls. I don't think I've ever had more fun in my golfing life than watching Mo strike golf balls and hearing him talk about his golf swing. But what he said and what he taught were very different when it comes down to interpreting his golf swing. For example, he talked about what he called the vertical drop. He talked about leading and lagging. He talked about the left arm above the trail arm in the entire swing. You can see pictures of him demonstrating that. He talked about buckle, sit, slide, bump, which is something he got from his, his good friend Paul Berthley, who was a well-known instructor. Mo used a lot of ways of explaining his golf swing, but here is, here's, here's the issue with the people who think they know what he was talking about, is that those terms meant nothing unless you had Mo there to explain them to you. And they also are very confusing. If I said to you, I want you to vertically drop your hands, and I, I had a hundred people in a room, and I said, everybody show me a, a vertical drop. You would see a hundred versions of a vertical drop. If I said to you, show me buckle, sit, slide, and bump with your lower body, you'd see a hundred versions of buckle, sit, slide, and bump, because words are very hard to interpret. What you have to do is the things I've been doing for the last 20 years, is you have to, number one, Mo was alive some of that time. I got to talk to him. I got to have him explain what he, what he meant by those things. But the explanation and the words, were it was more of me doing it myself to feel it, to interpret it, to measure it, and then find ways of translating that to people that wanted to learn it. I also, that's, that's the first thing is just understanding exactly what Mo and Omer did. You have to know some of the science and data behind it. Otherwise, you can't really understand it. That's number one. Number two is you have to have, have experience teaching it. And I'm a much better instructor now than I was 20 years ago. I, I didn't know nearly as much 20 years ago as I know today. Why is that? Because I've taught thousands and thousands and thousands of golfers this swing. And I've made mistakes as an instructor. I've, I've taught things that didn't work because the goal is to get results. So what Mo said and what Mo did have to be validated in the mechanics of, of the motion to get results. It's more than just what Mo said as far as uh, the buckling of the lead knee or I drop into a sit position as I come down, my legs get wider, all the things that he said about his swing. And they're all very true, and he did those things, but to, you have to really know, to understand those things, you have to know the entire picture of the golf swing. So today I want to explain to you the things that Mo considered idiosyncratic. There is a, there is a reason he did what he did. And the, the entire reason for everything, it wasn't to be different, it wasn't to be stand out from the crowd, it was to hit a golf ball long and straight down a fairway. That was Mo's, Mo's mission in life, was to be a great golfer. He, he, that was his life, was golf. So he, through trial and error, through standing in a field, hitting hundreds and hundreds of golf balls, thousands of golf balls, five million Mo said, hitting all those golf balls, he was able to develop through practice and hard work, a set of body positions and fundamentals that allowed him to achieve a result that you can, now you can learn. So here's it's where a, I come in. I met Mo Norman in 1994 in Chicago, Illinois, and I, I had known about him. I had been experimenting around with what I had seen in his golf swing, but this mythical, mysterious figure sat on, this, on the range and struck golf balls in a, in a more pure fashion than any human being I'd ever seen. And it was, it was, it was all, it was the sound of the golf ball, it was the, um, the direction of the shot, the trajectory, the consistency was a huge deal. He hit it long. It was all those things. I was, I'm a good player and I was a good player then. I knew a lot about the game. I knew a lot, what, I knew what I was seeing was something very special. But I also knew this, that if he could do it, I could do it. And I also know that if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> because it was just putting the pieces of the puzzle in place 
based on one simple concept, and here it is. If you put your position, if you put your body in Mo-like positions and you move your body like Mo, you will hit the golf ball like Mo. That's a pretty simple concept, and that's the only concept I, I went, went with when I started talking to Mo about his swing and then learning with him and learning from him. And I'm not saying it's easy, by the way. I, I would never say that learning anything is easy. That's why college is four years. That's why it takes eight years to become a doctor. Look, learning things takes time. I am not a quick fix guy. I don't believe that you can, you can one little tip's gonna get you there because the body is a complicated mechanism and one thing affects the whole thing. If I move my hand this direction, it changes the way this hand moves. It changes the way my shoulder moves. It's very complicated. So my premise that I teach with, and this is where I'm different than most instructors, I'm probably different than all instructors in this, you're either gonna like what I say or you're not, and that's okay. My premise is this. Mo Norman had the easiest, most effective golf swing that's ever been created by a human being because he positioned his body biomechanically in the simplest way that you can position your body. And if there's an easier way, I would teach it. If there was an easier way to get the job done, I would teach it because I'm not just sitting here saying, I teach Mo Swing because I like Mo Norman. I'm sitting here saying, I like Mo Norman and I teach his swing because I absolutely believe it's the easiest and best way to get the job done. I'm gonna go through the things here that you would call idiosyncratic, that a conventional golf teacher would call idiosyncratic, that the average human would look at and go, that's not like the PGA Tour, that's, that's, that, that's weird. I'm gonna go through these things because I believe that these are the reasons Mo was absolutely so fantastically great and why he was the greatest ball striker that's ever played the game not that there hasn't been other great ball strikers, but I believe Mo figured some things out, and I think it can help everybody out there playing the game. And if you don't believe that, and you think I'm full of crap, that's fine. And you can watch my videos or not watch them, but I just gotta tell you, this is what I believe. I believe conventional golf has it wrong. And the reason they have it wrong is, is because they seem to take for granted the starting position of the body at address. I call it the one mistake. The one mistake being to hang your arms in a fashion that's below your shoulders. That hang your arms below the body, below your shoulders, there is no scientific evidence that says that's the best way to start this machine to strike that object. Matter of fact, if you look at Iron Byron and some of the ball striking mechanisms built by humans to hit golf balls, they didn't start the club here, they started the club on a single lever. They start the club on a single lever and try to make a direct lever action into the object they're striking. They found it too complicated to put the club in a two lever rotational system because there's movement of the club, there's mass on the end. Physically, it was too complicated. Look at all the great ball striking machines, Iron Byron, I think Callaway has a machine, and they take it, they clamp the thing into a lever, and they go clamp, bang, and it's on a single lever. There's something to that, and this is what Mo figured out. So I absolutely believe that you can swing the club on a single plane, and you can orient the body into a very simple way to strike a golf ball, and this is what Mo figured out. So the, I think the biggest mistake is that the uh, conventional golf, the PGA, they teach this set up to the golf ball and let your arms hang. I think it's a mistake. And you're gonna t say to me, well, oh, that's, what, that's what everybody's done. It's actually not true. Everybody has a variation of that. If you look at the PGA Tour, there's, there's 150 variations. There's 250 variations of how the guys hang their arms at a dress, how they orient their bodies. They're all different, right? And so now you're gonna say to me, well, you gotta swing your swing, you know, swing your own swing. Look, if I can show you some, some simple mechanics that make common sense, you gotta think about them because I know that if you're watching this video, you're probably struggling with your golf game, you're probably confused, and you probably aren't very good at golf because you haven't quite figured out enough, so you're watching this because you want some answers. And so that was where I was when I met Mo. Okay, so I think there's one mistake. Well, Mo solved that, but he didn't just solve it by lifting the arms. There's more to it than that. There's a bunch of things that Mo did that, that people call idiosyncratic that orient his body in the easiest way. But we have to have a quick conversation about one thing here. We are, I'm trying to simplify what? So if I said to you, you're, taught it, you're gonna simplify the swing, what am I trying to simplify? I'm trying to simplify the millisecond that this club gets to impact. I'm trying to simplify the ability to get to that golf ball 
at the and make it consistent so it gets there the same way every time. That's number one. I want to get it to the proper position at impact every time. So that's the goal that I'm trying to achieve, right? All good golfers and the ones that are good have figured this out. That, that's what I was talking about when I, I talk about asking uh, the guys who are watching the, the video monitor. If I said, if I just saw data of a golf swing, if I saw data on the screen, what data would I look for that would show me a good player just from looking at numbers? And they said, oh, ball speed at impact, which means that good players get to the moment of impact consistently and bad players don't. And so if you're, if, you're, if you're not a good golfer, if one drive you hit goes 200, one goes 240, and one goes 180, you're not a good ball striker because you don't have enough consistency at the moment of impact. So when I talk about simplification of the swing, what I'm discussing with you here is how can I simplify your ability to get to impact? Now, ha having that conversation, all good players are similar at impact. They're, they're very, very different at address, but there's a ton of similarities at impact, one of them being is that at impact, their body orients itself into a tilt, almost, there's a range of tilt that all good players are in, body tilt, both this direction and this direction, and they're, they're all leaned behind the ball, right? So that's the tilt I'm talking about. And all of them have a particular set, their, their trail arm is bent, no good ball striker has a straight arm, and they have a particular rotation to the body. And you can look at the data on this, all good ball strikers have a particular rotation of the torso, pelvis, and tilt. There's those three metrics that all good players get to, and if you're a bad striker, you're not there. Okay, let me summarize this for you. So now, to help you, I want to make you more consistent at getting to impact, and I want, I want to get you into this position that all great players get into, and I want to do it in the least amount of motion possible. That's what Mo figured out. All right, so let's go through these elements here now that we understand why I teach what I teach as far as simplification and no other teacher is going to get you there because they can't. From a two-plane, what I call two-plane position, hang your arms down, you can't get there. You can't simplify that. Sorry, you just can't do it because there, it's flawed from the very beginning of that. All right, here's how Mo did it. I'll go through these pretty quickly, and this is what I want to understand is the real Mo Norman because you have to get all the pieces right. You can't just pick one. You can't say, I'm just going to set the club behind the ball. That's just, that's just a piece of it. It all relates, you need it all to be good. Here's the first thing. Mo tilted the body at address, so he tilted behind the ball. Why? Because that's very similar to the impact tilt. I just told you, you gotta be at a particular tilted impact. Mo oriented himself like that from the very beginning. That's why you see the club sitting behind the ball. The other thing he did with this tilt, it put the arm into a rotation and it aligned the club with the arm that's gonna be lined up at impact with it. So he already lined the club up into its impact plane. So in other words, instead of starting in two planes and then trying to figure out how to rotate and get to impact, he simply put himself in the impact plane so he could get there in the most efficient way possible, moving less. So more tilted address on a single plane at address. And the trail hand is rotated under. See how they're all going together? This is what Mo figured out as he hit those million golf balls out there in those fields. This is what he figured out because he wanted to get this thing going straight and consistent. Now the other thing too is part of what happens throughout this motion. So when you get these elements correct and you're in a Mo Norman oriented address position, the body can respond differently to movement. I'll explain that. So if you're a traditional golfer and you're in that two plane terrible address position, whatever variation you've decided to use, you now, what happens is, your body has to figure out, I gotta get tilted behind it, I've gotta get rotated, and I've gotta get some room here because the club's trying to line up with the arms. See what just happened there? How that orientation at address has complicated my ability to get where? To that place we've been trying to get to, impact. It, it, it complicates my ability to get to that most important moment, which all good players get to, impact. So once again, I gotta go back to where Mo oriented himself. He's further from the golf ball, he's on a single plane, and now, watch what he can do. He can go back and down, and because the club is returning to the same plane it started, see that club's not lifting, it's returning to the same plane, the body can stabilize itself by moving slightly this direction into a downward motion, see that? And this moves less. 
less rotation, more stable, more speed, and the ability to get the club to the same orientation at that moment. See that? This to this is easier than this to this. I'm just saying, that's what Mo figured out. And so that's why I teach what I teach, because my goal for myself was to hit this thing consistently. I want to be good when I'm bad. That was a big part of me playing golf. When I go out there on the course and I'm not feeling very good, I still want to be good. I want my bad days to be good. Mo said to me one day, he said, I, I don't know how to hit it badly. I don't know how to hit it badly. And it was true. He didn't know how to hit the ball badly. So watch. I'm going to get my body into a tilt. There's that lead arm alignment. There's my trail arm alignment on the single plane. Now I'm going to take the club back and bring it down, and I will reorient myself to the same plane at impact. Spatially, the feet are on the ground. I'm in the same space to the golf ball. I'll even be back to the plane here, and, I have, and I'll even swing it. I can swing it good or bad. I can't help myself. There's no way the ball is perfectly hit. There's no way I can really hit the ball badly because it's a much easier way to get to impact that's what Mo figured out in a nutshell. That's why I teach what I teach, and that's why I, I, the single plane swing is the absolute easiest way that I have found to not only help myself hit a golf ball straight, but to help you hit it straight. And that's why Mo Norman is an absolute genius, and he figured this stuff out all by himself in those grassy fields of Rockway between the ages of 14 and 19.